Welcome, my name is Doug Marshall, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jonathan D. Reynolds, the CEO of Titus Talent Strategies. Jonathan, good to meet you. Good to meet you. How did this uh, happen? How Where did, did this come from? You wrote a book. <laughs> ah, there you go, that'll do it. <laughs> you, you wrote a book, that's, that's how it happened. And uh, okay. yeah, I, I followed EOS and Gina Wickman, and I caught the difference in your uh, in, in your book title, because I, I, I think if Gino had to do it all over again, he would more emphasize the seats and the right people, because that's kind of the order that you got to put it in, right? You got to figure out, hey, that's you know, my point. that's my point. So, so I like that. But what I want to do is just do a short interview, because I like to share stuff like this with some of our customers and our prospects mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and get you know, kind of the thinking that you had, uh, you know, about writing the book and what your motivation was. So it seems like we got off to a good start. Anyway, you're, you're Jonathan D. Reynolds. And, and where, do you, where do you live? Where do you work? Um, well, the company's 100% mobile, so we're all over 25 different states. Um, I, over the last few years, I've lived in Wisconsin, San mm -hmm. Diego, California, and now Geneva, Illinois, about 45 minutes west of Chicago. How did you make that trek to Geneva? Uh, physically, <laughs> no, yeah, physically I, in a car. <laughs> uh, I've been here for one, just coming on one year. Christmas Eve um, of 2022 will be one year to the date. Uh, but uh, yeah, I moved my family. Uh, we were three years in San Diego. Um, it was an interesting season personally. We were the teenagers and moving and pan pandemic. We decided mm -hmm. it was best for us, the health of our family and kids to be around family. So we moved back to the Midwest and um, I have family members here in Geneva. So uh, we landed here. And we've been here a year. Excellent. Now, I know you're not from the States originally. Uh, give yeah. us some background there. Yeah, I'm ne nearly uh, coming on 25 years here from Bath, England. Um, and uh, and I've yeah I've been here for 25 years. Mo majority of it actually in uh, southeastern Wisconsin. So um so so yeah that's where my wife's from uh, mm -hmm. so that's uh, what brought me there yeah now you're you're the ceo and, and you are you started uh titus talent strategies right it's an interesting story i mean i i started i started a new business practice in a financial services firm and it was a recruiting practice um so they did they were tax uh special project staff augmentation finance um and uh they launched a recruiting division. Well, I did. And so mm -hmm. it took on a life and a culture of its own within the company. We did not fit with the rest of the team, <laughs> uh, these wild recruiting headhunters. And, um, and so we had an opportunity to carve it out. And I bought the division. And uh, um, it's been a wild journey. And now my old boss, my boss's boss from the old company, sold the rest of his firm. And... Um, join me on this fun journey so we've been working together for over a decade now did you start as a virtual company or was that a result of COVID? pretty much pretty much yeah very very early on we just said hey we'll be a, hundred, we'll be a mobile company and we can access talent better um so they're not just completely geographically limited to what we, the pool we have but we can access people all over the, over the country they're all in the u.s mostly in the u.s mm -hmm. a couple of overseas people um and uh um, yes, yeah, close to 200 of us now, salary team members. And um, uh, but yeah, we, we, we figured out that we really needed to um, understand the way talent is going to be in the future. And I mm -hmm. believe mobile uh, remote work was going to be something that was significant. So I didn't foresee the pandemic, but I definitely foresaw um, <laughs> that, um, and access to talent and allowing them to work from wherever, whenever. Uh, if we can figure that thing out and really care about people, people first, mm -hmm. but also very, very dialed in on the exchange of uh, performance. So uh, I, kind of a lot of our foundation is, hey, we, we know that you expect 100% of your salary. Mm -hmm. We will give you 100% of your salary, but you just need to give us 100% performance. So we're going to define exactly what both are, like the dollar amounts mm -hmm. on, the, on the salary, and we're going to exactly the numbers quantifiably on performance and at all times in the same way we pay you every two weeks we're going to make sure you're doing what you need to be doing every two weeks um, mm -hmm. and we think the, the clarity is a beautiful thing and so that if a hundred percent of our team members are doing 100 percent performance 
we should hit 100% of our budget and the financial performance of the company. So everything rolls up really, really, really clear. You're, you're measuring everything. I measure everything. Absolutely everything. Out of curiosity, have you ever heard of a book or read a book called The Year With No Pants written by Scott Birkin? Yep, I, I do. I'm, uh, um, I used to use the screenshot of that in a presentation I used to do um, okay. to talk about how we, how we went uh, remote or mobile back then. Yeah. He lives up here in the Seattle area, and I'm familiar with him. kept kept uh, kept in touch with him, and uh, I love I love his presentations and also uh, the books that he writes. So, oh yeah, so, I, I don't I've never connected with him, but uh, yeah, that's fascinating. That's fabulous guy. I think he's working back with Microsoft now. I've kind of lost track with exactly what he's doing. He took some time away from writing books and and doing presentations that was partly due to covid but speaking of books tell me uh what motivated you to go through the task the difficult task of writing a book and tell me about the book yeah uh i think it's probably other people pushing me to hey why don't you you got your whole training system um we call it higher for performance um and we run these workshops and we certify people in our methodology mm -hmm. um and somebody said, you should probably write a book on this stuff and get some stories in there. And um, I said, I don't want to do that. You know, so I uh, finally gave in and and packaged it all up and everything mm -hmm. that's useful and helpful for companies and people. Um, I'm not an, I'm not an author. Um, mm -hmm. I had no intention of writing a book to sell books, um, but uh, to give it to our clients, really. That's kind of how we how we've gone about it. But, um, yeah, it's, it seems that. People who are reading it, everybody seems to like it. It's a very simple read. Um, I'm not a, uh, um, it's not a big, deep, technical, <laughs> arduous task of reading it. You can read mm -hmm. the book in a day, no problem. Um, so, so, yeah. How much were you influenced by Gino uh, Wickman's work in EOS? Oh, yeah. So uh, we run our business on, on EOS, um, the entrepreneurial okay. operating system for the mm -hmm. last decade. Um, and so we're, we're very, very, very familiar and very, very thankful for EOS of the, as a system. Because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm this wild kind of traditional, they call it a visionary in his system, mm -hmm. like a visionary, um, very much kind of head in the future, et cetera. And then you need that integrator, your right-hand uh, person, kind of a second in command who makes sure all of the trains are running on site and the, the dream becomes reality. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, we talk about our 10-year core target, which is kind of the 10-year big dream of like what it could look like down the road. And then we don't know practically how we're going to get all the way there, but we really break it down by the three-year picture. The three-year picture is something that we can actually see, and there's a, a plan and a structure to get us there. And so I spend my time focusing on that three-year picture. Um, and then um, and then my integrator, uh, Scott Seafeld, is phenomenal just keeping everything in order, running the business. How long have you had that relationship with Scott? Uh, well, I, I bought the what is now Titus off of him when I started okay. recruiting in his company. So, okay. uh, uh, and then he sold the rest of his company, and then uh, we've been. He came back, and we're business partners now and uh, co-owners in this in this cool cool experience. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's it, it's been a massive. I would I, I think a lot of a lot of credit to EOS for our success. Um, um, and there's another secret source. I mean, I believe there's some favor from God on our business because I'm not, I'm not this good. Um, so <laughs> this is amazing, you know, it seems like everything we touch goes n nearly everything goes really, really well. So we've never taken on a penny of debt. Um, I'm a line of credit, so I shouldn't mm -hmm. say that, but it, it gets covered you know, for a month or something sure. like that for businesses right near the beginning. But we're not taking on debt as a company. We're uh, it's a debt-free organization, Inc. 5000, fastest growing for the last four years in a row. Um, and um, yeah, it's been really cool. We win a lot of these sort of culture awards and engagement awards and high engagement, high performance. Uh, and we found a lot of secret sources that we teach other companies now. So high uh, for performance is a methodology. The book, Right Seats, Right People, mm -hmm. is kind of packaged up guide. Um, and I, all the way through the process of writing a book, I thought, I'm never going to do this again. This is stupid. No one's ever going to read this thing. All that imposter syndrome is real. And then mm -hmm. as soon as I got done, I'm like, 
I don't really want to talk about this topic. I want to talk about other topics. Um, so read the book if you want. I'm not going to come to your conference and speak about the book. Um, <laughs> so they thought, what do you want to speak on? So recently I've been going, as I go around speaking, I'm, I want to talk about the power of generosity and as it, as it has an impact on your growth of your business mm -hmm. and the engagement and retention of your employees. But uh, so I teach on the, on the power of generosity um, mm -hmm. as a company and how it really causes a, uh, exponential growth, um, both um, financially in the company, um, but also uh, engagement of your talent and uh, performance of your talent, because they know that it exists for something bigger than just the ownership buying another whatever it is they're going to buy. So. Okay, so so the key takeaways here are you really don't want to talk about your book. You don't want to speak about your book. You want to talk about generosity. So if you want to learn what's in the book, get the book. And uh, <laughs> if you want to talk about generosity, give me a call. Is that the is best takeaway? Well, I'd say, well... <laughs> Yeah, talking about generosity is a means to grow. I mean, I, I believe there's an actual business strategy uh, about this. I'm not just going around saying, give all your money away. I'm like anti-capitalism or something. No, mm -hmm. I'm not into that at all. Like, I just think there is a strategic business development or a business growth uh, strategy by using generosity. Understand the pe understand one of your biggest assets to your people. Um, mm -hmm. Understand your people, and they'll be way more tied into what it is you're about if you care what, they're, what they care about. Yeah. Like, if you care about what their hands, what they're passionate about outside of work, many, many people you'll find are involved in something in their community. And there's a story behind why. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're intentional about and purposeful and personalized about giving into those things um, from a generosity component and budgeting for it, um, you'll find performance goes up and engagement goes up. And so I have a whole kind of methodology on that. But uh uh, that is one thing. And then just generally speaking, I find the talent space so fascinating mm -hmm. because people, all of us, you woke up today, some kind of dynamic in your life was different today than it was 90 days ago. I'm willing to bet. Mm -hmm. Something went on in your family members or somebody in your life who means a lot to you is causes challenge and pain that you maybe wasn't there 90 days ago. It makes us show up to work very different. I find that stuff fascinating. I'm like, how do I figure out those things? You know, how do I figure out those things? Not to manipulate people, but to serve them well so that we hit our company go goals as a, as a company together. So, yeah. That's well, thank you. Like. Thank you very much. That's a great message for this season, especially. And um, I'll follow back up with you, get you a copy of this, and uh, we'll have fun with it. But I, I, it, it, it's been great to get to know you and to learn a little bit more about what motivated you and uh, also a good message. So thank you, Jonathan, and have a great rest of the year. Yeah, same to you. Same to you.